All right, so for this next little part, we're going to look at the algebra of these summations, algebra of finite sums. And the first rule to know here, the constant multiple rule, is actually something we just looked at in that last example. Um, it says that if you have a summation, we're just going to put in default like k equals 1 to n, okay? If you have a summation that contains a constant multiplying your formula, like C a constant times A sub K, where this part is going to change based on your index K, and the constant does not change based on K. The constant multiple rule says that you can actually just take that constant and pull it out of the summation altogether out front like C times the summation of just the A sub K formula part. So we saw that on the last example with that one fifth that was multiplying everything. All right, here where we had our, our fractions, um, all of them were like one fifth times our odd numbers. And so in each new formula we were coming up with, it was like, okay, the numerator changed every time because that was the, uh, the odd numbers there increasing based on our index. And then the, the five just kind of sat in the denominator because it was just a constant one fifth multiplying our formula. And so that's why we're able to pull that one fifth out and do one-fifth times a summation giving us those odd numbers. So you can do that for any constant and any type of formula. It doesn't have to be just restricted to like odd numbers. If you have C times any formula A sub K, you can pull that constant C out front. So that's kind of a, a nice little trick to have there up your sleeve. And then uh, our couple of other rules here. We've got a sum and difference rule. That is what it looks like if we have generically a summation that has terms that are added together inside. Like if you have two different formulas that you're seeing come up in each term, like an A sub K and a B sub K type of thing, you can take that and you can split it into two different summations. You can take the sum of your A sub K terms and then add a summation for the B sub K terms. Okay, so K equals one to N. You would keep the same indexing information on each of those. And remember, of course, K equals one is just like the default there you could do K equals whatever you want on your own index. Um, so that would be the sum rule. And then for the difference rule, it's just the same thing with subtraction. If you see two different formulas that are being subtracted in your terms, then you could do just subtraction there. So plus goes with plus, minus goes with minus. All right. So that's sum and difference rule. Um, and then for the constant value rule, and by the way, you don't really need to memorize these names of rules, like calling it constant multiple, calling it some rule, calling it constant value, that type of thing. The main thing is just to know how these work. Um, but the constant value rule is when your formula is just some constant value that keeps getting added up. So that would look something like this. If you took k equals 1 to n, and then your formula was just like a constant. <laughs> OK. So let's see. For this formula, sometimes it's easiest to look at it with an example first. Um, doo -doo -doo. Example. If we took, uh, say, the summation from k equals 1 to 3 of the formula or just the constant 7, uh, 
something like that. Um, that would be, okay, k equals 1, our starting index. The term is 7 plus k equals 2. Okay, the term is 7. And then k equals 3. Okay, the term is 7. And k equals 3 is our ending index there. So interesting. <laughs> um, what that turns out to be is just you're adding together three of those sevens, or you could think of this as three times seven to get 21 there. So this idea here is what we're going to use for our constant value rule. Notice how this three was just the ending index right there. All right. So we're going to just take n times c for this constant value rule. And um, one thing to note on this one is that this formula only works if you're starting with k equals 1, by the way. If you start with some other value there, um, you need to somehow like tweak your ending index to make sure you get the right number of terms. Um, so this only works with k equals 1. So k equals 1 to n. All right, so if you started with like k equals 0, you would need to adjust your ending index accordingly. But um, this is kind of good to know because most of the time we will be setting up sums with that default, like k equals 1 to n. That's what we're going to see most of the time in this chapter. So this is going to be frequently um, applicable here, uh, this n times c. OK, so there's our algebraic rules for sigma notation. And we can use those to help us simplify expressions or even to evaluate them sometimes. Like just to go to the second example here really quickly to start with, notice how this is set up exactly in the form of a constant value rule. It's going from k equals 1 to an n value of 18. And so we're adding together 1 18th, 18 times essentially there. So we're going to just have n times c here, or 18 times our constant, 1 18th, and you would just get a value of 1 for this entire summation there. And um, so knowing like that constant value rule can be really helpful when you see something like that. OK, so that's a case where it can actually help us evaluate and see that that summation really just equals one. And um, the first example to kind of backtrack a second here. This example, we might not be able to evaluate it, but we could simplify this expression or write it differently. So notice here we've got k equals 1 to n, and then the formula for our terms is k cubed plus 6. So basically we've got ourselves like an a sub k and plus a b sub k type of thing. And so yeah, in the chat there first, can we use the sum rule? Yes, we definitely can. So yeah, let's do that sum rule take our summation k equals 1 to n of k cubed and then add a summation k equals 1 to n of 6 and then yeah you got the second part there as well then use the constant value rule on the second part very nice so yeah we will still have this first part um k equals 1 to n of k cubed there's not a whole lot we can do with that part right now, but yeah, on the second part, constant value rule. Um, notice that since we just have n for that ending index, we'll just have n times 6 or 6n six for that second part. 
but that simplifies it from two summations down to just one summation plus a term six in, which could be helpful. So yeah, um, that's how we would use the algebra of finite sums for things like this. And we will definitely see where this is handy, uh, I think in just the very next section, uh, 5.3, we're gonna be doing a lot of this. So these are good to know.